get a close-up look at this crack here. I could just fill it with glue or some powder or whatever, but it's going to be really noticeable. And, you know, it, it's kind of thing where this guitar, it's not used to Minnesota. It's going to be fighting the repair. So what I recommended to the customer is I'm going to route that open and put in a new piece of spruce and do some finish touch-up. It'll all fit together and uh, everything will look great when it's done. Okay, so now I need to decide which uh, piece of spruce I'm going to use to fill this in. I have a piece of Engelman and a piece of Sitka. Um, I, I don't remember which was which of these. Uh, I just use them for, for making cleats, um, whichever is closest uh, to, to the guitar that I'm using in color. So I've got exposed wood here, so I'm just going to compare color and also uh, how, how tight the grain is on top. And I can tell pretty easily that this piece is definitely darker and much tighter grain going through there. This is definitely closer. So I'm going to cut out a piece in the middle here where the grain is straighter because this is the top is pretty straight. I'll square out one side and then I'll cut off the strip and then screw it off. Then sand it to fit inside the All right, let's get in real close for a good look here. So I uh, glued this in and it was, you know, pressing it down. I got it pretty close to flush with the top. Then what I did was I cut some real thin strips of sandpaper and I sanded on this so that it's just slightly shy of being uh, even with the top. Because I'm going I'm to build up a little bit of finish on this. And I'll have some overspray. But what I don't want is for this to be proud of the top and I'm building finish up over it because that's that's going to be a disaster. I have it a just a little bit. You can only feel it by finger. Uh, nitrocellulose shrinks a lot, so this uh, should come out just right. And um, it's time to start building some seal coats. All right, so I'm going to put a cleat in on the inside of this, and I don't have a way to get a camera in there to show you, so I'm going to you know, lay it out here on the outside so you get an idea. Uh, I made a, a diamond cleat. It's a little bit bigger than I normally do because we've got this uh, splint in here, and I want to be able to have the cleat reach across that and reinforce both sides, both seams on either side of the splint. So I made one about this size, and I can... With my finger, I can feel where it is on the inside, so I'm going to line it up and press it in to be about here on the inside. And there you have it, uh, another repair completed. A um, couple of final comments about this. Uh, being that this is a transparent finish, there really is no way to hide that the repair is done. Uh, if this was like an opaque black or some other solid color, I could spray color over this. You're not going to see it, but... Uh, I go through and try and match the wood as best I can, get a nice fit around there so we don't have uh, any problems with the, 
the lacquer wanting to sink down into the seams or anything. Um, yeah. And uh, if I didn't mention before, um, I did this a little more on the rugged side. It's kind of what I discussed with the client. Uh, it's a guitar where the crack had been repaired before and it had come open again a second time. So he wanted to make sure that it was done nice and, and sturdy. Normally, uh, I, I, the, the filler strip I put in wouldn't be quite as tight, but seeing as how the, the wood around it is wanting to pull away, add that little, little extra tightness, the filler strip is also wanting to push on that wood, add a cleat inside, everything should be really solid from here on out. Um, also, my choice of using a Dremel to buff here, this lacquer is really rippled on the, the spruce here. Um, it's one of those things where all those little ripples, you end up buffing it flat, you're kind of thinning it out. Really don't want to do uh, any extra sanding or buffing. So I just like, personally, I like to just focus right where I did the repair. That's why I chose to use the Dremel. If I had a bigger repair, covered more area of this, I'd take it out to my buffing up wheel big buffing wheel and do an entire area on it. Um, I do the similar thing buff with the Dremel if, you know, doing touch up along the edge of a fingerboard or if I have a peg head crack, uh, peg head crack, I'll just buff that one little area and focus on that. So uh, that is how I go about doing this type of repair. Uh, if you have any questions or you have any similar repairs, my contact information will be in the credits and the about section of my channel. And I hope to see you in the next video.